गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू वी एल सी प्लेटफॉर्म प्रोवाइडेड बाई एम एस बी टी मुंबई वाई सी एम यू नासिक एंड के के वाग पॉलिटेक्निक नासिक माई सेल्फ सतीश श्री कामे एंड आर टूडेज गेस्ट प्रोफेसर टी बी कुटे सर सर इज ए असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ संदीप फाउंडेशन संदीप इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च सेंटर सर हैज एट ईयर्स ऑफ वाइड एजुकेशनल फील्ड एक्सपीरियंस His area of interest and research is Linux development and system admi administration. His books, named Bits and Bytes and Core Java Programming: A Practical Approach, are published recently at national level. Sir has conducted many workshops, hands-on training sessions, expert seminars, and lectures on programming subjects such as C, Java, Linux operating system, CAM. He is a founder of Nasik Linux User Group. He is also organizer of IIT Bombay Spoken Tutorials. Last year, his work in Linux was recognized by Linux Foundation USA. Computer and IT Association of Maharashtra also honored him for his remarkable work in Linux. He is a member of ACM, CSI, IST, SSI, LSI. Recently, sir has published an international paper in uh, international journal. Also, sir has uh, developed his own website, and sir has written more than four hundred newspaper articles published in various newspapers. Our today's lecture is based on introduction to Java programming and classes, methods, and objects. I request Professor T B Kute sir to deliver their best lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, friends. Uh, today uh, I am going to uh, teach you about the Java programming. It's your subject of uh, fifth semester. There are two lectures. In uh, first lectures, introduction to Java. All these topics of introduction to the Java will be covered. Okay, let's see. Let's start from the first. Uh, we we'll start with the first topic that is features of the java programming uh, there are basically uh, java is one of the language which is based on uh, web application oriented there are several features which are formed uh, say given over here let's see one by one first is java is strictly object oriented programming language so whatever everything that we use in the java is completely object oriented even your program is also uh, is an object your data types are also object or uh, any uh, method that you have to write everything is an object it's compiled and interpreted language this is one of the programming language which is compiled and interpreted so the java program is compiled first and then it get interpreted the second stage of compilation then final execution that we get it's a platform independent language means uh, the program written in java we can execute on one platform or the same execution will be done on another platform also means it's it's not dependent upon the operating systems all operating system in all kind of operating system these programs can be executed it's a portable it does not depend upon the hardware which is used to create your computer systems completely independent of the hardware then it's robust and secure robust means it's healthy completely it's uh, means at run time uh, the exception handling operations are performed means it is created in such a fashion that uh, though no programming errors no exception may occur or the provision is provided to handle such kind of exceptions it's a dynamic means uh, java compiler is created but if you want to add your own libraries into it it's possible so it's a dynamic programming language these are the basic features that uh, the java programming is contain it's also architecture independent means uh, basically whenever uh, uh, any kind of microprocessor that you are using any kind of computer architecture you are using java is not dependent upon that it's architecture independent Okay, these are the basic features of the Java's. Look at here, uh, how Java works. Uh, as I told, Java is a completely platform independent language. Whatever the source code which are written, it's compiled by the Java compiler. It creates a byte code. Byte code is one of the code which is platform independent. It can be generated by uh, Windows operating system. It can be generated by Linux operating system, by Mac OS, and by Solaris operating system. It can be executed on all kind of platform. all kind of platform that's why that's that's how java exactly works so compiler can be different but the interpreter is same okay so execution of the java program will be same on all kind of computer systems all kind of operating systems also uh, the first one java compiler 
Java compiler compiles the Java program. It checks for syntactical errors in the program. So Java program is a source code. It's converted into Java's compiler. Uh, Java compiler converts that into the byte code. Okay, it's given to the Java virtual machine. The second stage of execution of a Java program is Java interpreter. It takes byte code as the input. Java interpreter interprets that particular code byte by byte and it generates the machine code which is executable, which is understood by your computer system. So your Java program get compiled. So this is two, two stage compilation process that Java programming performs. The structure of the Java program. Basic structure is every programmer needs to follow the basic structure of the Java program. It starts from the documentation sections means the comment that you are going to write, then package statement, import statement, uh, then interface statement, then after class definition is there. And inside the classes, you are going to have the method declaration there. So every programmer follows that particular uh, thing. Uh, out of all these, two things are necessary. One is uh, the class statement and second is import statement. Remaining other things are not compulsory to write for a Java program. Okay, start with the basic, top, uh, basic type uh, topics of the Java program here. Start with the first, that is Java tokens. Uh, token means the smallest addressable part for your program. That is called as a token. So it can be identifier, it can be a keyword, it can be a literal, it can be an operator, or it can be a separator. Okay, let's see one by one how the Java program is formed. Basically, a Java program is a collection of the tokens. It's a collection of tokens, all alphabet, digit, special symbols, all they are used to create the tokens, constant variables, keywords, all these things are created with the help of alphabet, digit, then special symbols. Then your tokens form the instructions. So instructions are formed with the help of the tokens and multiple set of instructions which are written in a sequential fashion they forms a java program okay next topic that is constant okay as we already know in mathematics constant is a thing which does not change even in programming language also constants are there you might have studied c and c plus plus okay they also contain the constants the constants uh, are of three types in java programming one is numerical constant character constant third one is uh, your boolean constants uh, numerical constants are again divided into three parts integer constant floating point constants and character constant are divided into two parts character constant and string constant basically string is collection of the character constants uh, okay first the real real constants real constants are containing two kind of the data types there one is float and second double uh, in C C++ also the same data types are available float means whenever you are going to store uh, a value which contains a decimal point so we can store it over there it's minimum value is given here 3.4 into e raised to minus 38 and maximum value 3.4 into e raised to plus 38 the second data type which is of float basically four a uh, float requires four byte to store likewise double is also there double require eight byte to store so this capacity is more than your float variables the capacity is given its minimum value is 1.7 into e raised to minus 308 and maximum value is 1.7 into e raised to plus 308 characters you can use the characters in c, c, c and c plus plus so character constants are enclosed within uh, the pair of uh, single braces okay single braces so uh, these are the character constant only a single character can be written in uh, the single uh, quotes okay so a character is requiring two byte to store in java programming so if you compare that with c and c plus plus we require one byte to store in java we require two byte to store okay this is why because java uses unicode system to store the character in their memory but c and c plus plus uses the ascii system to store the character into the memory so ascii requires one byte unicode requires two byte to store into it okay next constant is boolean uh, boolean obviously so boolean is true or false so generally the programming languages like c and c plus plus they don't require they don't have boolean constant into it so they cannot store 0 and 1 as an individual value in a single uh, variable java allows it we can store a single bit of information into a constant into a variable also it's called as a boolean there are two kind of value that it can store uh, the first value is uh, true and second value is false so we can declare a boolean that can store true or false so basically boolean require one bit to store uh, the information into the the operators which are used to compare two things like uh, relational operators less than greater than uh, this kind of operators returns the value in boolean fashion true and false 
standard default values. Uh, generally, uh, in some of the cases, uh, whenever you are declaring a variable, again we start with the C and C++. Whenever the C and C++ programs are written, so when you are declaring INTA, when you are declaring integer variables, so generally uh, when these variables are declared locally, these values, these, these variables contains the garbage values inside it. But it's not the case for Java programming language here. Whenever any variable is declared, it contains some default value given to it. For example, boolean contains default value as false. Byte contains zero, long contains zero, integer contains zero, then your uh, float contains 0, 0.0, your double contains again 0, 0.0, character contains a null character, and references, any object references are created which are obviously null. So there is no any garbage values given to the standard variable declaration in Java. Let's, let's see that one. Next is scope of the variables. Uh, generally, there are two kind of variables that a Java program may contain. One is instance variable, second is local variable. Java, as we have seen already, the structure of a Java program. Java program contains class. Class contains the method. Method is similar to a procedure or a function in C and C++. So, we can declare the variables in class also. We can declare a variable in method also. Whenever the variables are declared in a class, they are called as instance variables. And whenever the variables are declared in a method or in a block, they are called as local variables. Okay. So, uh, depending upon uh, the type of the variables, depending upon these particular types, instance variables and local variables, there are two kind of scope given to the variable declaration in Java. One is called as class scope, second is called as a block scope. Class scope, when the variables are there inside the class, they are the part of the class only, they are called as class scope and when they are the part of uh, the block, they are called as block scope. Means not only to the methods, but whenever any local block is created in a Java program and the variables are declared into it, they are called as, they are having a block scope there. And whenever they are declared as a part of the class, they are called as class scope. Okay, so here's one example is given. Next, operators and expressions. Obviously, uh, to create an expression in Java programming language, in any programming language, we need to declare, we need to use the operators. Operators perform the operations on operands. So operate this part kind of operations are performed or expressions are created with the help of the operators. These are the type of the operators are there. Uh, arithmetic operators, assignment operator, increment, decrement, relational operators, logical operators, conditional operators, and some special kind of operators are also created in Java programming languages. The first one, arithmetic operators. Basic arithmetic operations uh, uh, of addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, modular division, uh, all these can be performed with the help of a Java program. In C and C++, whatever kind of operation that we create uh, in arithmetic operators, same can be done with the help of the Java also. So, almost uh, all kind of arithmetic operators are containing two operands. Next is relational operators. Relational operators are basically used to compare two things. For example, if you want to compare two things for uh, equality, so we can use equality operator. The first one, less than operator, it checks for uh, whether first operand is less than second operand or, or not. Uh, then greater than operator, then less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, then equal to, it checks for equality, two equal signs are given there and not equal to. All operators are same as C and C++. Not equal to, it will check for whether the operands are not equal to each other or not. All these relational operators returns the value in true and false fashion only. So Boolean value is written by relational operators. Next, logical operators. Logical operators are used to perform the logical operations. Logical operations means they are used to combine two conditions basically. The first one logical and uh, two ands are given when you have to uh, perform two operations. First operation and second operation. Okay, if both operations are same, then result of operation is true. Likewise, second is OR operator that we have seen in C and C++, same operation operators are used in Java also. OR operator basically checks for, again, uh, it requires two different kind of expressions, two different kind of relational expressions given as input. If first or second expression is true, then it returns true. The third one is logical NOT. Logical NOT is used to invert the relations. It is used to invert the relation. If that operation is required to be inverted, then we require logical not there. Next category is increment and decrement. 
plus plus and minus minus in C and C plus plus also these operators are available here also we are going to use this one and all these operators are unary operators unary means there requires only one op uh, one operand given there again increment and decrement are containing two categories one is post increment and post decrement pre increment and pre decrement when that operator is written before the operand it's called as pre when it is written after the operand it is called as post it is used to increment and decrement the content of the variable by one only next category is conditional operator this is the only ternary operator means operator is having three operands this is only ternary operator in all kind of programming languages so java is also supporting the thing this is a pair of a question mark and a colon it is used to construct the following expression look at this expression which is given here condition then the question mark uh, then a colon okay expression 2 then colon and then expression 3 when condition is true then expression 2 is executed when condition is false expression 3 is executed this is how this conditional operator perform the operations next category bitwise operators so basically bitwise operators are used to perform operation in bit by bit fashion okay you might have studied the operations of logical and logical or logical not in digital techniques all these operations are possible with the help of these operators which are given here uh, we have seen logical uh, operators there logical operators contains two operations and and it's logical and so if a single and is given it is bitwise and it is used to perform the bitwise operation bitwise operation uh, onto two expressions so bitwise and bitwise or bitwise xor then once complement then left shift right shift uh, right shift with zero fill all these are these operations uh, all these kind of operators are available to perform logical operations in a java programming language special kind of operators the first special kind of operator is instance of okay instance of it's basically a keyword it's a reserve word in java programming language so whenever any object name whenever you have to find whether this object is created for that particular class or not look at the example given there maharashtra instance of india maharashtra is the name of the object india is name of the class an instance of operator is written in between them when maharashtra object is created by the class india then it returns true if it is not the object of class india then returns false this is how the instance of operator is created second special kind of operator is dot operator so dot operator is uh, basically used with uh, with the help of the class and method it is used to connect the class and the methods it is used to access the instance variable as well as the method of the class using the objects look at the example which is given there company dot salary so salary is a method of this particular object companies it contains a method salary second example given company dot employee so employee is the name of the variable company is the name of the object so that employee is accessed from the object company this is how the dot operator is used now uh, operator part is finished we'll look at the properties of uh, the operators there are two different properties that operator is containing precedence and associativity obviously uh, all programming language contain the same precedence and associativity when any expression when any expression contains the multiple operations combined all together so which operation that your programming language must perform first that will be decided by the precedence of the operators and associativity now many thing it may happen that when one expression contains the associativity uh, precedence of two operands two operators same in that cases what to do in this cases associativity is considered associativity means from which direction to which direction the operations are required to be performed that is associativity okay look at this uh, the table which is given over here it's it's contains precedence as well as the associativity of the operators there are a lot of operators all they are categorized according to precedence and associativity the member function selection this just we have seen that the dot operator which contains highest precedence given wherever the dot operator is used that expression is solved first and then remaining others like function call array element they are all containing the same precedence given over here uh, all they are containing the same associativity that is left to right 
ओके सेम वे सेकंड प्रेसिडेंस इज गिवन टू पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट एंड पोस्ट डिक्रीमेंट ऑपरेशन देयर व्हिच इज प्लस प्लस एंड माइनस माइनस देन प्री इंक्रीमेंट एंड प्री डिक्रीमेंट यूनरी प्लस यूनरी माइनस मिड वाइज कॉम्प्लीमेंट बुलियन नॉट फोर्थ प्रेसिडेंस इज गिवन टू न्यू ऑपरेटर देन टाइप कास्टिंग ऑपरेटर्स देन फिफ्थ इज गिवन टू ऑल मल्टीप्लीकेशन एंड डिवीजन ऑपरेशंस सिक्स्थ इज गिवन टू एडिशन एंड सब्ट्रैक्शन ऑपरेशंस बेसिकली इन मैथमेटिकल रूल ऑल्सो इट कंटेज uh the precedence is uh, given higher to multiplication and division operations and then addition and subtraction are containing the precedence there eighth one is given to the shift operators all shift operator left shift and right shift operators are containing the seventh precedence eighth one is given to all relational operators less than greater than all they are containing the uh, eighth precedence uh then ninth one is given to equality check equal to not equal to uh like that for reference equality also inequality also these are used then 10th one is given to boolean and and bitwise and okay boolean and and bitwise and all they are containing the 10th precedence then 11 number is given to uh, xor operations all xor operations are containing 11 number precedence then 12 is given to or operations then 13 to condition uh, conditional and then 14th conditional or then 15 is conditional ternary operators and 16th is given to assignment operators assignment basically assignment operator is one of the category it's it's containing two operators combined together plus equal to minus equal to divide equal to multiplication equal to like that so these two operations are combined and uh, to form an expression so this is what precedent and associative it is contained look at the last uh, operator which is given there assignment operators uh, which are containing the associativity from right to left and above all they are containing the associative from left to right so when the expression is containing the same precedence given to multiple operators in that cases associativity is considered so uh, in these cases when any operator is um, uh, return at the left side it will be solved first and then to the right side like that that is what associativity is there uh next topic is automatic type conversion when any expression when you are creating in java programming language or any other programming languages it may contain uh, the variable of different types integer plus float or byte plus character like this kind of expressions can be there in these cases what kind of value your expression must generate that will be decided by the compiler that's called as automatic type conversion for example when you are having long value long, long integer and integer value in an expression long into integer in these cases always the value generated by the expression will be given to highest data type that is long now in this table this automatic type conversion is provided character byte short and integer when character byte short and integer values are there in any expression of the java programming language they always generate integer as a return type integer value as a return type if float and long are there float and long are there in that cases float is generated in double and float is there double is generated like that so precedence is always given to the highest data type the expression which contains the multiple data types whichever is highest means the data type which contains maximum amount of the space to store into computer's memory that type of the value will be generated by java expressions type promotion rules type promotion rules are okay whatever the uh, table that you have seen in the previous slide same that type promotion rules are there all short character and byte values are con converted to integer likewise when long is there when the long expressions is the highest one then it's converted to long when float is the highest one converted to float when uh, the double is the highest one then it's converted to double these are the type promotion rules that every expression in the java programming um, uh, language follows next is type casting type casting type casting is feature of all kind of programming languages obviously uh, whenever you have to force you have to temporarily convert any particular data type into another data type in that cases type casting is used so type casting is one of the operator that is we are having the round brackets round brackets are acting as a type casting operators so uh, if automatic type conversion automatic type conversion rules are already followed means they are already there they are uh, following uh, the highest data type conversion there but uh, when we don't require that things we have to use the values into lowest data type in that cases type casting can be used okay look at the uh, expression which is given over here uh, the type of expression which is 
called as narrowing the conversion it takes this particular form uh, on the presentation which is provided here the target value is given in the round brackets and in front of that we have to specify the data type a variable any particular variable that variable will be temporarily converted into another data type for that expression only for that particular expression only so for that particular expression when it's converted and then expression is um, generating a value after the expression execution your original data type of the variable will be kept as it is so type casting is temporarily done by the type casting operators look at the example which is given over here uh, b is equal to byte val this one b is equal to byte val so val is declared as integer and it's temporarily converted into byte to put that value into variable b okay so this is how the type casting operations perform the operations it will this particular program will print 163 as the output next is symbolic constants symbolic constants so uh, in c and c plus also symbolic constants are available uh, basically symbolic constants uh, they are containing a constant value the value given to the variable you cannot change it that's called as symbolic constants in c and c plus plus hash define is used if you are adding hash define and then the variable name and then the value the value will be given to that variable but it cannot be changed if you want to achieve the same thing in java programming language we can use the keyword final okay uh, look at the value yeah, as example given over here final double pi is equal to 3.145 so here in this case uh, this variable pi it will contain this value fixed 3.145 so you cannot change it afterwards you cannot you can use that value in the expression but you cannot change by any means you cannot increment it you cannot decrement it this is called as a symbolic constants of the java programming languages in many cases when you require to create a constant in java we may use this okay this is what the basic features of the java programming are now let's start with some programming features that is decision making and looping statements obviously all kind of programming languages contains that in c and c++ whatever the syntax which are followed same syntax will be followed by the java also some syntactical differences are there so very small differences are there we we'll look into that because c and c c++ c and c++ are basically used to create the java compiler that's why all these features are there they are inherited in the java compilers also uh, decision making and looping statements are if statement if else the switch case statement and conditional operator statements the first one is if statement if it contains this particular syntax if condition and then the statement is written or we can write if in bracket conditions and then multiple statements are written okay if only one statement you have to execute after the if then we can exclude this particular curly braces and if condition condition may contains any condition like uh, if you are going to check the relation between two variables if a is greater than b that's a condition if that condition is true then statements are executed which are written after the if okay this is a flow chart of uh, if statement uh, when condition is true condition is true the statement which are written after the if are executed when it is false the statement written after the if which are written after the if they are executed okay when it is false so this is how uh, the if statement perform the operation look at the example which is given here if number is less than 0 then it print the number is negative okay number is less than 0 it's a condition if that condition is true it returns true it is false it returns false so obviously the boolean values are written by this particular expressions okay when this is true it number is negative likewise we can use uh, the logical operators also look at the second example if ch is greater than a and ch is less than z it is an upper case letter okay and means uh, the condition both condition must be true that is and operators which can use in a condition then the third expression sale price is greater than cost price so it uh, prints you made a profit this is how the conditions are created these conditions uh, are used in the if statement so multiple conditions can be combined or a single condition can also be there second form of the if is nested if nested means if condition 1 again if that condition is true again if condition 2 again if that condition is true we can have if condition 3 so multiple kind of conditions we can combine uh, in a nested if so they can be combined all together with one by one if 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 multiple if can be created so it's called as a nested if 
second form of the nested if is also there if condition 1 is true then if condition 2 is true then it will go to statement 1 statement 2 statement 3 execution there it's called as a nested if then third form of the if is if else okay here we have seen only for the true okay if condition is true then it execute the statements and if what if if the condition is false then we can write a else there else part okay look at uh, the syntax which is given over here if condition the statement for condition is true else statement for the condition is false and statement after the block if the condition is true the statement which are written in the if block they are executed else the condition the statement which are written inside the else will be executed when the condition is false this how the if else statements are there okay so if uh, in graphical format how we can look we how, how we can look that particular decision making statement there if else now if condition is true statement under the if are executed if it is false statement under the else are executed and uh, means either if or else they will be executed it is compulsory what is the statement written in if or else they will be executed depending upon the condition which is written in front of the if okay nested if else nested if else also possible we can write if condition again if condition else again condition means uh, again after else we can write if condition like that so multiple combinations of if else can be generated okay look at this if condition one statement one then again if condition two statement two statement three again in else statement four statement five again else of the outer if is there at the end for statement six okay statement after the if else are there this this else is for this particular if okay first if the condition once if is there then else statement six statement after the if else will be executed this is how the nested if else structure can be created next form of the if else is if else ladder if else ladder if else ladder if condition then statement else condition then statement else if again condition then statement again else so multiple kind of multiple different conditions can be combined in this particular fashion this is called as else if ladder or if else ladder look at the example how beneficial this particular if else ladder is there if we have to check the class or the grade of the marks which are obtained by the students we can create an if else ladder there if marks are greater than equal to 75 then grade is equal to distinction else marks is greater than 60 then first class else marks are greater than 50 then second class if marks are greater than 40 then pass class and if all or these conditions are not matched so at end we will have that else that is fail so grade is equal to fail this is how the else if ladder can be created in a java program next that is switch statement for decision making so switch statement is again similar to c and c++ programming statements switch statements whenever you have to make uh, the choice from a menu a menu selection in that case these switch statements are used uh, generally we will have the same syntax that is there in the c and c++ switch and in round brackets we will have a variable name and inside it the cases will be there case 1 case 2 case 3 multiple cases can be created and at the end the default statement will be there and it's completed so three keywords are there switch case and default these three keywords are used to form the switch case statements okay uh, look at uh, the example or look at the syntax which are given over here switch then variable then case we will have value 1 value 2 multiple values can be there and at the end default which is used so when variable matches the value 1 wherever this variable which are given in a switch which matches the value of value which is in front which is given in front of the case if they are matched then statements in front of that case will be executed okay again if match with value 2 then statement after the value 2 will be executed and if it is not matched with any of the values any of the values given in the cases then default block will be executed and remember one important thing is there every case statement every case block is ended by a break for case one also i have written a break there for case two also the break is given default is not containing a break remember because the default is always uh, written at the end of uh, the switch statement there not compulsory to write uh, the default at the end but it's not containing a break also if, it is, if you are not writing a break over here 
in these cases if statement 1 is executed automatically your program control will transfer to execute statement 2 also if break is not there so basi basically break is used to jump out of the switch okay and the statement which is written at the statement out when switch is completed then it will execute the statement which are written after the switch case these are the switch case statement executes the graphical representation in a flow chart which is shown over here variable your program will check for the value of the variable that value is value 1 statement 1 are executed and it will go out of it if value 2 is there statement uh, 1 will be executed which are given after the value 2 and then it will go statement out likewise multiple cases are there there is no any limit given to the case statement so any number of case statement can be written if it is if your variable is not matching the va with the value of any case then default block will be executed at the end look at the example it's a very simple example provided uh, same can be applicable in c and c++ also switch x then case 1 it will check the value of x and 1 here the value x is given then 1 if value of x is 1 then it will print 1 and break if value of x is 2 it will print 2 and then break and if it is not matching with 1 and 2 then default statement will be executed okay number not correct like this so if you want to create a program which is menu based the program is menu based in these cases the menu selection operation can be performed by a switch statements next while loop now we look at the looping structures so loop control structures which are uh, created in a java programming language the most important loop is while loop so, so three loop structures are there basically while loop do while loop and the third one is for loop even in c and c plus also contain the same loops almost syntactical differences are not there in while and do while loop the first is while loop look at the syntax which is given for the while loop uh, above all above the while loop will have initialization initialization statements are given whatever the variable that you want to initialize all they will be above the while then while while is a keyword which is used to create a loop and then condition and then the within the curly braces the body of the loop is given generally what exactly a loop is whenever you have to execute the multiple number of statements for multiple number of times or a single statement for multiple number of times you want to execute that by changing the value of the variables or without changing the value of variables we have to create a loop control structures so this statement that you want to execute for multiple times they will be enclosed within a loop and then loop will be written in while loop also when while and condition is there what's the condition condition is used for termination of the loop basically if that condition is true your program control will go inside the loop and it will execute that loop continuously again once it is executed it will go to check the condition again if it is true then then also it ag again execute the body of the loop okay so what if you want to create a loop what we need to do we have to write such a condition in the program which will terminate the program in some conditions this condition is given so body of the loop it will contain any statements increment decrement also printing statements input output statement anything that you can write over there look at the example uh, of the while loop there int i is equal to 0 I have written there int i is equal to 0 then while i is less than 10 system dot out dot print ln i love java and then i plus plus is given and your program is completed it's a very basic loop created there I have initialized value of i is equal to 0 while i is less than 10 okay obviously for the first time the condition which is given there i is less than 10 it is true so when condition is true your program control will transfer inside the loop it will go inside the loop system dot order print in i love java it will print there then after i am changing the value of i i plus plus so value of i was zero previously it will be incremented by one this is the post increment that i have used to increment the value of i it will increment this particular value and i will become one then again your loop will go to check the condition if it is true or not when i is 1 obviously next time also condition is true so 10 number of times this particular loop will be executed at the end when value of i becomes 10 value of i becomes 10 in that cases condition will become false your loop will be terminated so for 10 number of times the statement which is given in system dot out dot print ln that is i love java 
that will be printed onto the screen. This is how the while loop perform the operations. Okay, look at uh, the flow chart of the while loop there. How the while loop actually perform the operations. First initialization. Initialization section is always outside of the while loop. First initialization. Then condition is checked. Whatever the condition. If it is true, then body of the loop will be executed, and then it will go to condition again. It is the property of the loop. When body of the loop is executed, it will go to the condition. If it is true, again body of the loop is executed. If it is false, then it will go to the loop. Uh, it will go to the statement which are written after the loop. So loop is terminated. This this is called a termination of the loop when condition is false. This is how the while loop is uh, executed. The second one is do while loop. There is a property of while loop. Uh, it's called as a pre-test loop. Pre-test loop. So we uh, before.